Today I'm going to show you guys how to do this crazy AI face changing orb effect. It's going super viral right now and I'm going to be breaking down how you could do it super easily today. If you guys are looking to get these super geeked up music video effects instantly, go check out my brand new pack geek effects. You guys can use code 15 off to save 15% off your order and it'll be linked down below. So hopping right into this here, you guys can see we're inside of Photoshop. You actually don't have to use Photoshop, but I'm going to explain the whole process kind of with Photoshop here so you understand how it works. So essentially what you want to do is you want to go over to this website here called Luma Dream Machine and essentially Essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading the first image and then the second image and then the second image, then the third image and then the third image and then the fourth image, if that makes sense. And then we're going to mesh it all together in any editing program of your choice. So you don't need any Adobe stuff to do this. You don't need any specific editing plugin or program or anything like that. You can do it for free using this website and any editing plugin or anything you want, even your phone, to be honest, um, just, just to be 100%. So pretty much what you want to do if you have your own music video is take screenshots, a bunch of different screenshots of your artist's face. So this one is a good up close screenshot. I typed in laser dim here to find some good ones. So there's this one here and we could have it warp to this one and then have it warp to, I think that's the same one and have it warp to that one. So you basically want to get like good up close pictures of their face essentially. So let's start off with that first one here. So we're going to copy it and then we're going to go inside of Photoshop and I pasted it and then we're basically just going to resize it to our liking. So just like that. And then we're going to save it on our computer. I'm pressing command option S. You can also go up here and hit file save. I'm going to call this one one and I'm going to save it as a JPEG and then hit save. So now we're going to go ahead and find our second image here. So let's do this one now. I'm going to paste it inside of here. And what you could do to make it even cooler is you can move it around. So see his face is in the middle here. We can put his face like off to the side here for this one. And if you want to go ahead and brighten it, like this is a little bit underexposed, you can go up to filter inside of Photoshop, camera raw filter. And what I recommend playing around with here is the shadows. You can bring them up just like that. And then you can bring the highlights down and then maybe bring exposure up a little bit and then maybe add a little bit of vibrance and saturation. And boom, that's a lot brighter. We're going to save this and just save it as two here. And we're going to do this a couple of times. So I'll be right back when we have them. So if you ever get super low quality images just like this, what you could do to make them better is if you go inside of Photoshop, you hit filter and you go to neuro filters here. We can go down to photo restoration, turn that on and make sure we have both of these on. You guys are going to see his face is going to look a little bit animated, a little bit cartoony, but it does, you know what I mean? The before and after is kind of crazy. Like it does help a little bit to bring up the quality of it. So we're just going to do that for this one here and then save this one. And we'll do this one last one here. I'll hit copy and then bring it in. Now, if it's a smaller image, just like this, another tip that I'll put you guys onto is if you basically turn off everything in the background, you can see if you try and match it with the white, it's not white. So what we're going to do is if we go over to the eraser tool here and we turn up the hardness and we click on laser dim here, I can turn this up and then kind of like follow around and like erase around him. You guys can see it's not perfect, but I mean, for how long this is going to be on the screen, I say it works. So boom, you can even go super detailed, make the brush smaller go in there. I'm not going to do that. And we'll save this as four. So essentially, once you have all of your JPEGs, I'm assuming you guys are going to have more. We're then going to go over to this website here, which is Luma Dream. And you just want to basically drag and drop them in here. So I'll show you the process that I would follow. So you have all of our screenshots here. We'll drag in the first one and you guys are going to see it's going to add an end frame option, then click end frame. And then apparently you have to find it on your computer, which is kind of annoying. So then we'll hit the second one transition the faces and we're gonna go ahead and do that but they're at capacity right now so we apparently have to try again later so it seems to be working now we're just gonna let it do its thing i'm now gonna duplicate this tab and then we're gonna do another one so we're gonna do the second one now and then the third one we're gonna run that through and then it's at capacity so we're just gonna try it again you basically just have to mess around with it until it gets going. And then we'll do three to four. So you guys see super crazy transition there. You can even give it a prompt and say, uh, uh, keep person in center, just change face and we'll see if this works. I highly recommend if you guys do have the money to upgrade if you're going to be using this effect a lot. So boom, you got a little bit cleaner of a face warp compared to these two. You guys can see it. We ran it through twice. We've transitioned the faces. Then we have this one with no changes, essentially. And then what I do again, um, if you want to make it loop, you can go ahead and then take the fourth one. We transition from the third to the fourth and then do the fourth one back to the first one. So we'll just use these ones for now. Now that we're inside of Premiere Pro, I'm just going to drag and drop these in here in order. And there's a trick to making this very, very smooth. 
a lot of people don't really talk about with these AI things. Um, so first of all, I don't want that there. I'm going to zoom in so that's gone. I'm going to press Command C on my clip and paste it on the other two. I'm sure whatever editing program you guys are using, you could do something similar. So essentially what we want to do is kind of like where it starts. We'll go like how many frames is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll do eight frames in. We'll cut it and then we'll go to the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cut that. And then all this stuff in between right here, we're going to right click and make it 500 times speed and we'll do optical flow and then we'll move this over and we'll see how it looks. You could even make it faster. So let's make it like 800 times speed. We're literally just going to play with it until we get something that we like. And then same thing for this one. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll do the end 800 times speed. Bring it in here. And then the very last one here and sweet. So if we play it through, we're going to get something that's a little bit crazy, right? It's not like perfect. You do have to render through a couple of times if you do want to make it like insanely perfect. But I think this one here is as perfect as really going to get according from that one. This one's kind of weird. That spin there, I think we need to like slow it down before that. So we'll do speed and duration and we'll make it like 200. But then it gets like a little bit choppy as well. So we'll do like 500. And then we'll bring this one back to 100 here. And then we'll see how this looks. So it's really just messing around. You guys saw how I made that a little bit smoother there, but the sauce in all of this is right clicking, creating a new item, creating an adjustment layer. And then we're going to drag this on top of our footage here. We'll go into effects. I'll show you guys two ways. First, I'm going to use RSMB, which is a paid plugin, but it's forced motion blur. It's really going to make all of this look super beautiful. So if you hit I on our keyboard and then go towards the end and then hit O, we're highlighting all these clips. You want to go up here, hit sequence, and then render the effects from in to out. And it's basically going to render it with the motion blur on it. You guys are going to see it makes it so much smoother. All you have to do now is maybe add like a little bit of sound design. And then I would maybe I would fix this last one. I didn't fix it. Like I do the same thing that we did here to make this one smoother by slowing it down to like 400 times speed instead of 800 before it goes back to normal. But yeah, guys, that's the way to do it with RSMB. Another way you could do it, it's not going to be as good as the RSMB. But if you drag and drop another adjustment layer on here, what you can do is like when it starts to like, you know what I mean? Like move like that. If you go in and type uh, directional blur, this sounds kind of crazy, but you could literally just keyframe a, dire a directional blur on it. So we'll do direction and blur. And then right when it starts to pick up, like see like right here when it goes to 800, we'll move our keyframes here and then uh, to about here. We'll have it go like turn up our length up and then we'll make this 90 degrees. Maybe we'll turn it down just like that. And then we'll move this over so it hits it faster. And then moving on where it goes here, we'll have it still be at that. So it's like, and then you'd bring it back down to zero like right here. So you get a little bit of that motion blur there and you can go ahead and turn it up if you want. Right. A little bit goes a long way. You guys see what I'm saying here? Really helps hide it and uh, makes the effect better. So I recommend playing around with that. And then you could mess around with like the easy ease in to make the keyframes smoother. Play around with all that stuff there, guys. This is what I got for you guys for this tutorial. If you want to see more AI tutorials just like this, make sure to leave a like. Let me know in the comments below other videos you want to see as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Geek Effects is on sale right now. So if you want edits like this on the screen that are super crazy, go check it out. See you guys in the next video tomorrow. Peace.